If you watched my previous video on unusual symptoms and presentations of colon cancer, you might remember me saying, in medical school, doctors are taught an old saying, when you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. And this means that as a doctor, you really should consider the most likely possibility first when thinking of a diagnosis. In medicine, that means if your ankle hurts after you played basketball all day long, then you might have sprained it or hurt a muscle. Your first thought shouldn't be you have a terrible bone cancer. In real life, this this means if you lost your car keys, then you start first by looking in your coat pocket or on the kitchen table. You don't immediately search the refrigerator or the dishwasher expecting to find your keys. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian. Today's video violates the hoofbeat rule. We are definitely going to look in the dishwasher for our car keys and specifically relating to colon cancer. Now, before we start that, I do want to go over a little bit of the usual presentation of colon cancer and a little bit about what colon cancer is. Globally, colon cancer or what is known as colorectal cancer is very common. It's the third most commonly diagnosed cancer in males and the second in females. And colon or colorectal cancer comes from the large intestine. If you look at a picture or a diagram, the colon forms kind of a picture frame in your abdomen and it has different parts, the right, the left, the cecum, and the rectum. Over on the right side, just as the colon starts, is what's known as the cecum. This is larger and then the colon gradually tapers toward the end where the stool comes out and this is known as the rectum. And colorectal cancer has some basic, very well-known risk factors. These include low dietary fiber, a diet that's high in red meat or processed meats, a lot of alcohol use and there's a very high association with diabetes. For example, 38% increased risk of colon cancer if you have diabetes. And finally, genetics. There are a number of syndromes that really predispose you to colon cancer and if you've had a parent or a sibling or a close relative with colon cancer, that puts you at significant risk. And then there are the typical symptoms. Bleeding in your stool, change in stool caliber. That means when your stool goes from normal size to very small, this is known as ribbon stool or pencil stools and unexplained anemia. This means when your red blood cells are low on standard tests. So those normal symptoms and signs of colon cancer are really what we're talking about when we say hear hoofbeats, think horses. But now we're going to switch and we're going to go to the hear hoofbeats, think zebras paradigm. Or in other words, we're going to start looking in the dishwasher for our keys. And I'm going to concentrate on four very rare signs of colon cancer that you would find on your skin. These fit into a very specific kind of clinical sign known as as a paraneoplastic syndrome. Para in Greek means near or around and neoplastic is a tumor or a cancer. So the word means near a tumor. This means that the cancer causes the sign but only indirectly. Let me give you an example. If you're diagnosed with melanoma, a common skin cancer, and you look at the skin underneath a microscope after you biopsy it, you see tumor cells. That's not paraneoplastic. That's direct tumor involvement. In the four signs I'm going to discuss, if you do a biopsy of the skin and you look at the cells, there isn't any tumor there. They're normal cells. The cancer is actually somewhere else inside and indirectly causes the skin changes. The first sign is known as the lesser trela sign. The characteristic lesion is a seborrheic keratosis. This is also known as an SK. SKs are very common. They're on your skin, often on the back. They're raised, which means you can feel them. They're pigmented, which means they're dark and they're asymptomatic. That means they don't itch, they don't hurt, and most people don't notice them even though they've had them for decades. And usually it's just your significant other who might identify them and tell you that you have them because they're very often on your back. They can be present for many, many years and they can very gradually increase in size and number, but over years. And they can very gradually turn darker over years. Well, the sign of lesser tray law differs from the normal run of the mill SKs because in this sign, you have an explosive onset of multiple seborrheic keratosis and they itch or they can be really uncomfortable because they have inflammatory changes at their bases. A variant of the lesser tray law is if you have pre-existing seborrheic keratosis and they've been there for years, you can suddenly have rapid growth and darkening of these lesions. Now again, it's very rare, but it can signify internal cancer, most commonly actually from your stomach, but also the colon. And again, seborrheic keratoses are very, very common. Just because you have them doesn't mean you have a cancer. It's sudden onset, 
rapid increase in size, number, and itching that are really the hallmark. Next is malignant acanthosis nigricans. Acanthosis nigricans, big word, is very common. It is a dark, velvety area on the skin that's really found in moist areas. In medical parlance, it's found in intertriginous zones. This is areas where skin rubs on each other, most commonly the armpit, but also in the groin. There is a very high association with type 2 diabetes, obesity, and specifically insulin resistance. And again, this is a very common skin finding in that population. But malignant acanthosis nigricans can actually be quite different. Patients that present with this actually are older. They are generally not obese and actually the opposite can be very, very thin. And malignant acanthosis nigricans appears in unusual spots. Instead of the armpit and the groin, it's in areas like the mouth or the palms of the hand or the soles of the feet. Very unusual. And malignant acanthosis nigricans can appear with some other skin findings like the appearance of multiple skin tags. So if you have extensive and progressive acanthosis nigricans, that's really a concern for internal malignancy. Another thing that acanthosis nigricans can occur with is the sign of lesser trela. And together that really should raise a red flag. Next is a skin finding called acquired hypertrichosis lanuginosa. Hyper means increased, trichosis means hair, and lanuginosa means fetal or baby. So this is the growth of what looks like fetal hair. It's also known as malignant down. It's unpigmented, long, and easily pulled out hair. And it can rarely occur two years before the diagnosis of cancer, especially in lung and breast cancer. That's rarely. Hypertrichosis lanuginosa that's acquired usually presents when patients already have advanced or metastatic cancer. That is cancer that is already widely spread. Rarely, you can have the early presentations I mentioned. And what is really curious is removal or treatment treatment of the malignancy actually lead to resolution of this unusual hair growth. The final rare skin indication of colon cancer is known as muir torre syndrome. This is the development of a sebaceous skin tumor known as an adenoma. It happens in a sebaceous gland and it presents as a yellowish or skin colored papule. That means it's a little nodule that you can feel and it's actually quite small, usually smaller than a quarter of an inch. These can occur normally, that is in the presence of no tumor, but when they do, they're usually around around the eye or they're in the head and neck region. When they indicate an underlying cancer, they're usually not on the head and the neck, but somewhere over the trunk. The development of these lesions almost always precedes the development of the cancer by a very long time, even years. So if they are recognized on the skin, you actually wanna get a specific genetic test. And the colon cancer that's associated with these skin lesions actually happens about 15 to 20 years earlier than is seen in the normal population. So that's a tour through the truly rare skin associations with colon cancer. If you want to visit through the more usual presentations, try this video I did previously on colon cancer. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.